Shemath Palutia invested $100 million in Virgin Galactic. In this video, we're gonna talk about why he's so bullish on Virgin Galactic and the space economy. What's up guys? In this video, we're talking about Chamath Palpatia, Virgin Galactic, and the space economy. We're gonna take a look what Chamath had to say about Virgin Galactic over the last two years. But first, who is Chamath? Chamath is the founder and CEO of Social Capital. He was also an early senior executive at Facebook and has a net worth of $1 billion. My name is Benny, and this channel is all about investing in stocks, and I'm trying to make you guys money. If you guys are interested in making some serious returns in the stock market, this channel is for you. I talk all things stocks and investing and finding opportunity where others don't see it yet. And that's what this video is all about. The space economy, the next big thing since the internet. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up for me guys. Okay, so over the last two years, Chamath Papatia has done several interviews talking about Virgin Galactic and the space economy. We're gonna take a look at four key areas that Chamath talked about all to do with Virgin Galactic on why it's such a good investment. In part one of this video, we're gonna be talking about Chamath breaking down the demand for Virgin Galactic's space tourism business. The space tourism business is supposed to launch in early 2021 when founder Richard Branson is expected to fly to space. In part two of this video, we're gonna be looking at what Chamath had to say about the safety of the business. The worst case scenario for most investors when investing in Virgin Galactic as if their spaceship crashed. This would send the stock price soaring down. However, in the clips I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see Chamath have absolute conviction that safety is not a concern. Part three, we're gonna be looking at hypersonic travel and how Virgin Galactic has a $300 billion opportunity here. And we're talking about 300 billion, we're talking about 300 billion revenue a year. And in part four, you're gonna see how Chamath talks about Virgin Galactic being an incredibly safe investment and their incredible software-like margins. What do you think, especially now that there's going to be quarterly earnings reports, what do you think investors are going to want to hear from this company? I think there's going to be two vectors that are really going to matter. The first vector is to describe the demand. So there are already 600 plus customers that have paid, um, you know, $80 million, about $120 million of future business. There's three or 4,000 more after today. I suspect there'll be many more thousands after that who want to give us money. And so I think understanding that demand will be really important for people to uh, get comfortable around the long-term projections. And then the second is about George's execution ability and his team's path to getting these rockets in the air uh, on a more and more frequent basis. Let's talk a little bit about that, shall we, George? I, 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 know you guys, I know the company is targeting next year to begin commercial service, 600 person backlog right now. How big is this market for suborbital space tourism? And I guess longer term, how many people are going to be paying $250,000 for a ticket to space? Well, the exciting thing, Morgan, is, is that um, we're in the, the highest growth part of the luxury sort of services experience. It's out of home luxury experiences is the part that's growing the fastest. And that's basically what we're doing. And so, you know, globally, we think around 2 million people can experience this uh, over, the, over the coming years at this price point. And then, of course, over time, we'll be able to reduce that price point. And at that point, the market just explodes like it's, you know, 10 times as many to 40 million people. So we think it's like a huge market and it's going to be capacity constrained for the near 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 term. Now, publicly speaking, there really is no direct comparable for Virgin Galactic. In the private market, there is one uh, comparable company and, and that's Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos Blue Origin. How are you thinking about competition? Well, you know, um, I think what Jeff and the team over at Blue are doing is great. You know, we think that we've got a really attractive service offering. Um, but, you know, ultimately, we think this is going to be a capacity constrained market. Like more people are going to want to go to space than either of us can bring in terms of service. So we think we've got an amazing experience from our runway takeoff to runway landing and then a very safe rocket motor and just a wonderful experience in space where people are going to be able to, you know, have these amazing suits and float around the cabin and experience the wonder of looking down at planet Earth. So I think it's, uh, it's going to be a great market for both. A couple of weeks ago as well. Um, one of the questions that gets put to me a lot by prospective investors and is, um, how do you know it's going to be safe, right? And um, and and so when it comes to space, okay, when it comes to space, I mean, space is hard. Human spaceflight even harder. Uh, it, it's got to basically go off without a hitch, near perfect, no real room for for error here. Um, 
how do you ensure that that's the case and, and what do you tell them? Well, it's actually funny. I was a customer first and so me and my wife are going to go, Chamath's going to go, Richard is of course going to be in the first commercial flight. So we're yeah. like uh, very confident that this is going to be a safe experience. Basically what it comes down to two things is one is we've got a very safe architecture that can abort in any phase of flight. And the other thing is that we've tested it extensively. So really our system has been in test for over 10 years and what we've been able to do is just really drive up the reliability of the system so that we feel a real high confidence in, in the system itself. Yeah, hypersonic travel has come up, this idea of point-to-point -point travel around Earth um, and certainly seen at least by some of the analysts that are starting to look at this industry as, as the big long-term opportunity. I know it's been discussed with Virgin Galactic as well. Was that always part of the plan when you started this company? It was. Um, the reason that we, one of the reasons that we built our spaceship like an airplane was because um, you know, by flying this airplane at three and a half thousand times the speed of sound, uh, sorry, not the speed of sound, three and a half thousand miles an hour, um, uh, we're already testing a, um, a, a spaceship or an, or, or an airplane uh, that, that can travel from point to point at, at tremendous speeds. So, We've just tied up with Boeing, um, and we're going to be exploring point-to-point um, -point travel with them. And I think the reason they invested in, in Virgin Galactic was because um, you know, we've had 15 years of experience in this uh, to date. How much was the hypersonic piece of this puzzle the driving force for you to invest? To me, it really represents the long-term optionality in the business. So the way to think about it is today what we're buying is a really interesting, very lucrative, super high margin space tourism business where we'll be able to take some of the profits to iterate on this other idea. Long haul travel today, 10 hour plus flights, people are spending 300 plus billion dollars a year. And Morgan, a hypersonic plane can take a 10 hour flight and reduce it to 90 minutes. So the way to think about this is we're going to go and pioneer and really push this idea of space tourism, getting people to space. But as Richard said, once you do that, you get a test bed of technologies. We have a free option on hypersonics. And when we deliver a product in the five to 10 year time frame, we will be able to directly disrupt a 300 plus billion dollar revenue business for the airlines. What you're doing today with, with these investors, um, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a fun day. They're going to see great things. But at the end of the day, they're going to want to know that their investments are, are going to pay off. Um, this is kind of like an ultimate moonshot, if you will. How do you convince them of that? Well, I actually think this is one of the safest and most interesting investments that I've ever made. In fact, I felt so confident after doing the diligence that I decided to invest in an additional $100 million of my own money. And the question is why? And while what I saw was a hardware business, and you can see some of the hardware behind me, but with margins that look like a software business. So gross margins approaching 70%, EBITDA margins approaching 50%. It's a kind of a business that's very rare and unique, very difficult to build, not a lot of competition, incredible amounts of demand, very constrained supply, huge margins. Um, so I don't think it's a moonshot at all. In fact, in fact I think this is one of the most interesting, uh, value-laden investments that I've seen in a long time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on Chamath Papaltia talk and all things Virgin Galactic. When a billionaire such as Chamath and Richard Branson have such conviction in a company like Virgin Galactic, you really got to take notice and hear what they have to say about it. Okay guys, so on this channel, this is part one of my Virgin Galactic series. I'm going to be uploading several more videos on Virgin Galactic. I'm going to be talking about their fundamentals, their management team, and what kind of return you can expect from Virgin Galactic in the next one to 10 years.